First Timothy four two. Please excuse me. First Timothy four two. We're going to read verses 1 and 2. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. When we talk about how you're not supposed to table drink cups with devils and eat the, at the table of devils, Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with the hot iron. This goes about the list I told you about how your, how your conscience can be seared, can be damaged, it can be scarred. Um, we are in the last days, we're in the great falling away, and there are certain areas where someone's going to be wrong, and their conscience is going to be seared. There's times where people were wrong and they did some things that were horrible, said some things that were horrible, and their conscience, you bring them back to truth, but it still has that scar. People are going to say, weren't you, weren't you vehemently dis standing for only believe, only believe, and now you're telling me it's not only believe, it's repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, you know? Uh, the Trinity, you stood for the Trinity hardcore, you stood for post-trib hardcore. Uh, your conscience can be seared and it can have um, scars. But also this is talking about, the, I believe, the falling away. You've got people that are saved but their conscience is being seared, they're giving in. They're saying, I, I can't, I've, I've been out of the Babel building for Ten years, and you know what? I went back once, and I just, you know, I'm gonna turn my back on this. I'm, I'm just, I got, I want, I want that social atmosphere. They'll try to say fellowship sometimes. I want that social atmosphere, or, you know what? I'm pre-trip, pre-time. I almost said it wrong. Pre-time of Jacob's trouble, but the group I like hanging out with, they're all post-trip. You know, maybe there's not a big deal between you know, when the catching away of the body of Christ is. Maybe there's not that big, and their conscience gets seared. Okay. The falling away, people are going to be falling from the stands of this King James Bible. We're going to learn truths. The biggest example lately has been the Trinity. We're going to learn truths that we've been using words, uh, like saying, kill your conscience. As you notice, we have a poem called One thing that says you can kill your conscience. You cannot kill your conscience. It can become weak, it can become defiled, and we're going to get to the point where it talks about how it can be evil. Your conscience can be evil. But you can't kill it, but we say these words. You can kill it. You say these things. Okay. Doctrine of the devils. Uh, your conscience can be seared with a hot iron. So, don't, whatever you do, some shall depart from the faith. Uh, given it, uh, taking your faith away because you want head knowledge. Uh, not having faith in the mysteries, okay? not understanding that it takes faith to repent, believe, confess both in prayer, and call upon the name of the Lord to save you. Because people just say faith, it's just faith in Jesus, faith alone in Jesus Christ. It doesn't say faith in Jesus alone, okay? It says you're saved by grace through faith. It takes faith to do all those things. But do not depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. Do not when someone tells you, hey, if, it start, if he starts steering away from the Word, and he starts saying things that seem cool, like telling cool stories and, and straying off, don't get seduced by these spirits, these false spirits that say, hey, I'm a Bible-believing Christian, but the apocryphal books say, you know, so, I mean, you can tell it's so seducing when you have a man that will say that, Jesus say, no man knoweth the day or hour, and then turn around and say, but I believe you can. For, God, for people to watch that and go, wait a minute, he, and not see that he's calling Jesus a liar, that's seducing spirits. They have been seduced by that evil and wicked spirit. And the doctrine of devils. Okay. So we see here, your conscience can be seared with a hot iron. 
These last days, I can just pray for the brethren and tell you guys, stand, 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 stand. Don't faint, don't falter. You fall down, allow, if you drop your cross, pick it back up immediately. Repent, forsake, pick your cross up and keep going. Don't be part of this falling away. Second Timothy one three. So we're heading over to Second Timothy chapter one verse three. Then we're gonna read chat we're gonna read verse one through four. So Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. I, am, I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers, with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith, not fate, that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother, Louis, and the mother, Echris, and I am persuaded that in thee also. I think I went too far. So let's just go to four. Verse 3, I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience. Remember we read the definition of pure, okay? Uh, free from moral defilement, defilement, without spot. They've served God with a pure conscience. The God of their, whom I serve from my forefathers, I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with a pure conscience. Your conscience can be pure. You can serve the Lord and make mistakes, but your conscience can still be pure. You're still saying, hey, I'm doing my best to serve God. I'm doing my best to do what's right. Um, free from guilt. Guiltlessness and innocence is another definition in there, okay? Free from guilt. I don't have any guilt in my heart about telling people that the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ is truth. Post-trib, um, mid, uh, post-trib, pre-wrath, which is mid, that's all false. I have no guilt, okay? Making videos and putting them online, doing word studies, I have no guilt. I have a pure conscience that what I'm doing, I'm doing for the Lord, okay? That's what's going on here, okay? Serving, I thank God, whom I serve from, from my forefathers with pure conscience, okay? Your conscience can be pure. And what's the opposite of pure? I didn't say this in the other one. What's the opposite of pure? Defiled. So it's possible for you to have a pure conscience, and it's possible for you to have a defiled conscience. When your conscience becomes weak, it's weak and defiled. When your conscience is strong, it can be pure and strong. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have a pure conscience. Make sure you realize that, hey, I have faith in this book, the King James Bible, and I have faith with a pure conscience that I'm doing the work of the Lord. Have confidence. Be courageous. Have courage. Titus 1.15. The lower few pages. Titus 1, verse 15. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled, remember I was talking about how they're opposites, and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their minds and consciences is defiled. Okay? Unto the pure all things are pure. Saved, sinners. Okay? But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving, that's why it says and unbelieving, is nothing pure. Okay? Your conscience cannot be pure if you're lost. Because right? you have no faith in God. You have no faith that what you're doing is right. You don't have faith that you know where you're going when you die. Okay? Believe it's not pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. Okay? 
I've talked to people, I've watched videos by brothers, they're always like, well, I don't get why they just don't get this. I don't get why they don't get this. Well, right here explains why most of the time the lost world won't get it, okay? Their mind has become defiled and their conscience has become defiled, all right? They want the world, they want their sin, and they ignore their conscience long enough, it becomes weak, and when it becomes weak, it becomes defiled. Lost people cannot have a pure, heart, a pure conscience. They can have a strong conscience because you have people that know right from wrong, and I am... Um, you know, I won't do that because it's wrong, I know that, I have, I'm a good person, I'm a good person. But they'll never have a pure conscience. Mm -hmm. Free from guilt, guiltliness, and innocence. Okay. So, gosh, you don't want that. Let's say, the lost world, their mind is defiled, their conscience is defiled, and I try to assure the brethren out there that don't get too frustrated. There's times I get frustrated. Why don't they get it? Why can't they see? Why can't they see the true gospel? Why can't they see the Godhead is the proper God? The true Jesus of the Godhead is the proper Jesus. Why can't they see pre-time of Jacob's trouble? Why can't they see the Bible version issue that the King James Bible is God's perfect written word in English? Well, their mind has been defiled and their conscience has been defiled. That's why. So, don't get discouraged. Discouraged. Sometimes I slur words. All those years of having seizures left and right. It's starting to catch up to me. We did to Titus 2. No, no, Titus 1.15. Hebrew 9.9. 9. The book of Hebrews written to Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. Nine. See Hebrews nine nine, and we're going to start in verse seven. But in the second, and we're going to read to ten. Give me a second. It's getting a little hot, and I've been going for a while. I'm going to probably break this up in segments. Hopefully, you guys are still with me. But in the second, in the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself or for the errors of the people. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way in the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, Jesus Christ, while at the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for them then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the, to the conscience. Okay. Remember we talked about how your conscience can bear witness to the laws that God has written in your hearts? Okay. What's going on here is the, the old animal sacrifices and gifts they gave to the Lord, it can't take away your sin. Okay. Your conscience, it doesn't clear your conscience, in other words. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can your conscience be pure, and that you can go from being under the law, that will conscience bearing witness, uh, the, the law is the schoolmaster to bring you to Christ, to being under the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay? And ten, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinance imposed on them until the time of reformation. So that's what they did that they thought would make them clean. And it covered their sins, but it didn't wash it away. So that's the conscience there. The law is still there. They couldn't keep it. The sin is still there. And this is, like I said, this is to the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble, trying to get them back to believing in Jesus Christ, whom they rejected the first time he was here. Hebrews 9.14, no, sorry. Yeah, Hebrews 9.14, we're going to read 11 through 14. So we're just going to keep going. But Christ being come a high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, 
comparing Old Testament and New Testament, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. You uh, Babel building defenders, get a hold of that one. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled the unclean, sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? If you're living under the law, the works are dead. Okay? You're going to go to hell. But if you're serving the living God and you're under the blood of Jesus Christ, you're going to go to heaven. That's why he said, purge your conscience. Mm -hmm. Your conscience become weak. Okay? It can become seared. We read in seared. Um, defiled, is, like I said, a lost person is defiled. You can purge your conscience and get it back to where it's right with God. Okay? From dead works to serving the living God. So when your conscience gets defiled, you can purge it and say, you know what? A person who's lost can fall on their knees and say, Lord, save me. Lord, I'm a sinful, just a, a mess. Lord, I am so sorry for sinning against you. And you can turn to the Lord, purge your conscience, get it back where you have that conviction that I, I'm, I'm, I'm a sinner. I can't save myself and turn to serving the living God. Okay, so once again, in context, I believe this is talking about your conscience becoming defiled, but you can purge it. You can get saved where it can be pure. Uh, Hebrews ten two. We're going to read verses one through four. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually making the command uh, commoners thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sin. In other words, if all those sacrifices could take sin away, then why were they still conscious of it? They had conscience of the sin that they have done. Um, I don't know if, if it works for you. There are times where I still say, Lord, I'm sorry for sins I've committed in the past. But for the most part, you're not, uh, you don't focus on your sins as much anymore. You repent, you fall on your knees, you ask the Lord to forgive you, and you move on. But they're saying here that even though they did the sacrifices, their conscience was still a sin. Okay? that they're still a sinner, that it didn't really wash their sins away, it just covered them. That feeling that it didn't really wash it away, it just covered it. And we were supposed to read to four. But if those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sin every year, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. What I'm talking about. Okay. And their conscience, they're like, it didn't really take away the sin. Um, they covered it, but it didn't take it away. Hebrews 10, 22. Just going down a little bit. We're going to start at verse 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their heart, and in their minds will I write them. Had a brother in Christ do a great study on this where it's talking about this is the, the Jews, maybe in the time of Jacob's trouble, the mark that's put in the um, 144,000. Hope I'm getting the right number right. Uh, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. Because the laws of God is not just in their heart like it is today, uh, the schoolmaster to bring us to Christ Jesus, it's also written in their minds. Okay. Now I lost my place. We'll do it 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I'll put my laws in their heart, and in their mind will I write them. 
and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now, now where remissions of these is there is no more offering for sins. You don't make, uh, Jesus paid it all, it is finished. You don't make offerings for sin anymore. And in the millennial kingdom, you won't be making animal sacrifices. Jesus Christ will be right there. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. We're going to read to 24. By a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, conscience can be evil, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke and to love and good works. And right now we look at the Jewish people and we say, man, they're so wicked and they're so evil. And they are. They're living in wickedness and there's some of them that are very evil. And when the time of Jacob's trouble comes, um, that's where the part they're saying, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Okay. Your conscience can become evil to where it says, there's nothing wrong with what I'm doing. The Jews over there, um, people, I have brothers and sisters in Christ that talk about it where they are going to be starting up the animal sacrifices again. Okay, That's very evil and that's very wicked. And they're going to realize that they are wrong and they're going to have to have that evil purged Let's see, sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. They're going to have to get that evil and wickedness out of their conscience and say, you know what, Jesus was our Savior and I'm going to have to do right. And it's just going to be a tough time for them. But for this study, your conscience can be evil. You can have an evil conscience. And I believe... Evil's opposite of good. So good conscience means your heart is right with the Lord, and evil conscience is your heart is wrong with the Lord. Okay. Your heart can become evil where it's wrong, or your conscience can become evil where you're wrong with the Lord, and you're like, I'm doing this and have no problem. It's wrong. Your heart's wrong with the Lord. You should have conviction in your heart for doing something wrong, believing something that's wrong, doing something that goes against the Bible. Okay. You should have that conscience, and when that good conscience isn't there, and your heart's not right with the Lord, then that's where you have evil. Your conscience becomes evil. And I don't want to get into talking too much. I want to keep going. 10 verse 22, we just did that one. 16 to 24. So, and then we're almost done. Right now I'm kind of burning up because some of the bulbs I have are the old-fashioned bulbs and it's getting hot in here. I didn't realize it's going to be so long. Hebrews 13, 18. So we're going to hit Hebrews chapter 13, verse 18. The last chapter in Hebrews. Pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience and all things willing to live honestly. Good conscience, being right with the Lord and having strength, your conscience has strength. So, but one thing that I have to point out says, pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience. For we trust we have a good conscience. But it still says, pray for us. And I'll use this to make, like you, you sound the call to the brothers and sisters out there in Christ. Pray for the brethren's conscience, okay, that the brethren's conscience stays good and it stays pure, right with the Lord. Okay. And these last days, temptations coming in, you've got wolves in sheep's clothing coming in, uh, false Bible-believing Christians, false leaders and teachers and preachers of Bible-believing Christianity, and pray for the brethren that their conscience stays good and stays pure, that they don't become defiled, they don't sear their conscience with a hot iron, 
that their conscience becomes evil, it's wrong in the sight of God? Pray, pray, pray for us. Prayer never hurts. Prayer is a good thing. So, good conscience. Your conscience can be good. It can be right with the Lord, and it can have strength. 1 Peter 2.19 We're going to... That's 2 Peter. 1 Peter 2.19 For this is thanksworthy if a man for conscience towards God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. Now I don't want to get into it because I'm not very in-depth when it comes to stuff that's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, but someone, a sister in Christ, talked to me and I was kind of struggling with this one and they said, your conscience, in the time of Jacob's trouble, your conscience is going to have to endure. If you give in, your conscience doesn't stay um, pure, it doesn't stay good, and it starts to get weak and becomes defiled, evil, you're going to give in and to take the mark of the beast. And if you take that mark of the beast, you go to hell. So right now, we can fail. Our conscience, we're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, we are eternally secure, we can ignore our conscience and fail, but in that time of Jacob's trouble, if you ignore your conscience when it comes to taking the mark of the beast, I'm starving, I want clean clothes, I want a roof over my head, you know, I want to feed my flesh, I'm tired of having to put the flesh down, I'm tired of starving to death, I think I said that already, but you're going to have, your conscience is going to have to endure. Your conscience towards God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. Um, you're going to be persecuted in that time period like you have believe. The um, Bible talks about how people are having their heads cut off for um, for the commandment of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. I hope I'm saying that wrong. I'm not hoping I'm saying it wrong. I'm hoping I'm saying it right. But your conscience, if you reject the true gospel of repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, I mean, God, I've already said this before, wishes that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance is part of salvation. Anybody tells you differently, they're leading you to hell. If you refuse and reject the true gospel of our salvation, saved people, your salvation, if you were willing to get saved, fall on your knees and repent and believe, you're going to be going into that time of Jacob's trouble, and your conscience will have to endure. You cannot give in and take the mark of the beast. So one thing your conscience can do is it can endure. You can, you can keep it endure being good, strong, pure. You endure. You try your best to keep it that way. You've got to endure. You've got to endure. But if you don't, it becomes weak, it becomes defiled, it becomes evil, and you wind up taking that mark, you go to hell. And no, you can't cut your hand off after you take the mark and still be saved. I mean, you get the mark on your forehead, just cut your head off, you can still be saved. I mean, I was just so shocked how deluded people are getting and how twisted things are getting out there online. 